Hello everyone, um, Davika Pugh, been with Zurich 25 years now for my sins, experienced fleet underwriter. I think that's experiences in age more than anything else. <laughs> no, everything Z. Z. Um, and then Z. Yep, hi all, it's uh, yep, Z Ahmed, um, commercial combined underwriter at Zurich primarily focused on new business uh, so look for reasons to write new business and I've been here for 12 years um, and always been new business so yeah looking forward to my 25 years at Zurich at some stage <laughs> ah. it's getting there yeah indeed good stuff thank you Z um, so I'll just move on to the next slide which is an overview of what we're intending to go through today um, so it was basically a bit of a call to arms um, from Bravo to improve our engagement with with the brokers across the network to make sure we're doing all we can to best support you. Um, and I think there's been a lot of emphasis and focus on our SME proposition. So the aim of today is to give you a broad brush trading update of um, the journey that Zurich has gone through over recent month, months and years, give you a flavour of regional and SME trading um, and how best to get the you know the best out of our regional underwriters so z and d and the wider team talk about risk appetites give you a flavor of 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 where where we're winning um and why we're winning in that area but one of the things that's very important to us at zurich and i'm sure it is to you guys with your customers is that broader proposition and the broader value we can add to zurich um, and then i'll just do a brief summary at the end um as to what we discussed through Please feel free to ask questions as we go through. I'd like this to be as interactive as possible, but I have left time and space at the end of the session to cover off any questions. You are welcome to shout out, raise your hands, post in the chat, um, but please feel free, just shout up if there's anything you wanna add um, or ask, or if I'm going too fast, or if you wanna clarify anything, then just let me know and I will um, do my best to assist. So in terms of a trading update, uh, Zurich has gone through a lot of change over recent months and years. Um, and one of the reasons we've gone through that change is, is from the feedback and the engagement we've had from our brokers. So across the piece, in terms of what brokers have said to us about some of the challenges they have experienced when trading with Zurich around send an inquiry and it glows into a black hole. I don't know um, where to go to get feedback on it. Um, you take too long to turn things around. When you turn things around, there's umpteen questions and, and there's not enough time to deal with them. So we as Zurich have spent a lot of time listening to brokers to really understand um, how we can get better, how we can better service you guys and support with your risks and inquiries. Um, investment. So Zurich has spent a lot of money, which is good, um, in improving how we um, work with our brokers. So one of the significant investments we've made is, is, a, is a new office in Bristol. So we were in Bristol many moons ago, but I think it's 16 months ago, we reopened an office in Bristol where we um, employed a number of underwriters into that office, just so we can be there, be visible and engage with our brokers in that region more effectively. As we all know, there's there's nuances to every geographical region and having underwriters there who understand some of the different profile of risk we're likely to see really helps us um, better respond, react to your needs and requirements. Um, but beyond that, there's been a significant investment in um, technology, which has formed various different guises. Um, one being the implementation of Actress into our regional trading underwriters. So not the Actress that you would use for SME, but our underwriters in the region for a combined product will use Actress to support their underwriting process. So whereas prior to that, um, it would take an underwriter probably the same amount of time to underwrite a five grand case as it would a 500 grand case. Um, we've tried to deploy some IT solutions to help with that moving forward. Um, so that's just a couple of the areas. Responsiveness. So um, again, we we challenged ourselves really hard on this responsiveness piece because we know 
nine times out of 10, if you go back first on a new inquiry to a broker, pick up the phone, have that conversation with them, they're going to do all they can to support you in response to that. Um, so originally we set, and Z and D will have loved this at the time, a two hour SLA deadline. So when a submission into the region would hit our business, underwriters had two hours to pick up the phone and talk to you guys as to what we would need to do to secure that risk. Slightly unrealistic. So we've stretched that out now to 24 hours. So um, the regional underwriters have a 24 hour SLA deadline where they will do all they can to pick up the phone and have a conversation with you about that risk, not to underwrite it, but just to understand what your strategy is, what you need from us, um, and your deadlines and to give you a flavour of what we would need as Zurich to move it forward and give you a compelling proposition to put forward to your customer. Um, so yeah, there's been lots of work around that and digitalization, and then flexibility is another area that we focused on quite heavily. We know in the current economic climate, a customer does not do one thing, they might be a manufacturing risk, but then they might be doing this side hustle that um, is also part of their business and operation. And so we need to be as flexible in our underwriting style and approach to accommodate some of the diverse entrepreneurs that you as brokers will be managing and looking after. Um, so that's very much something that we we are doing and looking to support brokers with moving forward. And then collaborate. So as you can appreciate, we have got agencies with most brokers. Um, so we are very focused on understanding what brokers want to collaborate with us and supporting you accordingly. So there's been huge engagement between Zurich and Bravo, um, and we're keen to support you in that regional space um, as a key partner to us moving forward. So as, as some of the things I will move on to within this presentation will hopefully demonstrate um, in terms of how we would look to support you. So that's a bit of a flavour, a will in flavour of what we've we've done, we've achieved, and it's really showing through in our broker feedback. So um, our broker net promoter score, which is basically how we manage, view, understand the mood music of what our brokers think of us has moved forward significantly. So we've gone from really struggling in the sort of 70% um, range of percentage feedback to going up to 89%. And that's moving forward month on month. Um, so we're really having some strong broker feedback that's telling us in the regional space, and that's specific to the regional space, we are more responsive, we're more flexible, and um, we're more engaged to support brokers um, in the long term. Um, so regional versus SME, this presentation is very much focused on our regional mid-market trading capabilities. I will share the slides afterwards, um, as I know some of that's going to be a bit challenging to read. But just to give you a flavour of what we are looking for in the mid-market space. So we work on turnover um, and we are looking for risks with a turnover in excess of five mil. And from a fleet perspective, we are looking for fleets where there are 20 plus vehicles. Anything below that would sit within our SME solution. Um, so anything with a turnover less than five mil can be underwritten within our SME, um, whether that be Zurich Online or Actress. Um, and then anything with less than 20 vehicles, again, can um, be accommodated within our SME solution. Um, so within the regional underwriting space, the main focus for us and D and Z on the call will be fleet commercial combined, property owners and construction risk. They're really the, the four products that we focus our time and attention on and where we are seeing a lot of growth within our region. Um, so from a commercial combined point of view, we can either do that as the full package where we've got the liabilities and the property exposure together, or we can also look at writing um, risks mono lines. So if there is a need for just EL in isolation or material damage and business interruption on their own, we can also look to write those as mono line packages. Um, and we have a broad spectrum of 
standardized covers that we can deploy and I'll in a moment I'll hand over to Z to give you a bit of a snapshot of some of the highlights of our combined product um, but we do really try to operate um, a bespoke solution for each risk that we are presented with um, we one size fix, fits all does not work um, in the economic climate we operate in we have to listen to what your customers are telling you and then in turn ask as to what they need from a cover requirements point of view um, we can be flexible on limits excesses you know depending on the risk depending on um, the performance we will collaborate with you guys as much as possible um, to help build a package and a solution a solution which meets the client's needs. We absolutely aren't um, a market where we'll go, you're a manufacturing risk, so you must have this product. Um, you're a retail wholesaling risk, you must have that product. We don't want your client to be buying for covers that aren't going to add value um, to what they're, they're do. So we'll, we'll look at the risk information you present us, have that engagement and draw up a solution that will meet that. Um, and I'll go on to sort of the, the coverage and the, the product lines, but I've put a brief summary of Fleet as an example. So Fleet, we have, we're probably pretty well known for our Fleet proposition and solution. It's mainly probably the one thing that you guys will think of when you think of Zurich, but we have an any driver wording. Um, so if they're an employee of the organisation, um, they can drive a vehicle on the Fleet. Um, we do it on an annual declaration basis. And we have no young driver excesses. Uh, we will have terms based vehicles. So if there's any high performance vehicles on the fleet, um, we will potentially apply terms to those um, based on the, the driver's age. But but if it's a general fleet of cars and vans, nothing out of the ordinary, then we're very comfortable if they're an employee of the organisation, they will be able to drive that vehicle. Um, which is really handy, especially in certain sectors where they might take on um, younger employees. Uh, so, you know, you're not going to have to come to us and say, we've employed an 18 year old and they need to drive this car. It will, they can just drive it as standard. There's no MTAs that need to be applied. There's no additional premiums um, that we would, we would need you to inform us of to move forward on. And I've just highlighted there about electric vehicles. So, I found this is an area that we're really excelling on in the fleet space is our ability to accommodate electric vehicles. So, I mean, it must have been more than 12 months ago that we reviewed our wording and we amended our conditions on our policy to make sure they were fit for purpose for EVs. So the definition of accessories was changed. So it would in, you know, include the cabling that's used for charging electric vehicles. Um, we made sure that whether the battery of an electric vehicle was leased or owned, our policy would respond to that. We've got an option that if an insured wants a hire car that's an electric vehicle, because as you can imagine, if you if you use an electric vehicle now, you're then not going to want to have a diesel car as a hire if your car's being repaired. So we've made sure that our policy and the service infrastructure that sits behind that is fit for service to support. Is there anything more to add on fleet? No, I think you've covered it off well. When can you start? <laughs> well, look forward to the pen any day now, Dee. <laughs> um, don't trust a sales manager with an underwriting pen. Um, so yeah, so so that's just a real high level snapshot of um, the fleet proposition. Um, I suppose I'll, I'll I'll go into more detail around um, appetite after I hand over to Z. But then alongside the combined real estate, construction and fleet. We also have a number of other ancillary lines that we will look to do as much as possible to package up. So the marine, the personal accident, business travel, engineering inspection, legal expenses, cyber, executive risk solutions or DNO, as other people might call it, and then professional indemnity. So these are all um, other lines of business we can look to work with you to find a solution for internally. Um, and so I touched on this briefly uh, again about a year ago, we launched the actress tool within our underwriting team for our commercial combined proposition, our mid market commercial combined. So this is aimed at risks with a turnover between five and 50 million. Um, 
We've deployed Actress to make our underwriters' lives a lot easier for producing um, the documents, pulling the policy together, making it truly bespoke to the customer's needs without having to send off for wordings to be written and, and so on and so forth. And for us, we can issue same day um, documentation um, which before we'd have, you know, would take a considerable amount of time just to get you your EL certs and your policy documents to back up when we've onboarded the risk. But beyond that, there's some tweaks and improvements we've made to our coverage to hopefully, um, you know, whether it keeps us up with our competition or puts us ahead of the game, I'll let you guys on the call be the judge of that. Um, but I'll hand over to Z just to talk through some of these points that we think are, are, are quite relevant and useful to you guys. Oh, thanks, Alison. So the product is market leading. Uh, the competition is playing catch up um, from, from the brokers I've been trading with in the main. Um, so these additions in the past, uh, most of these you would have had to request uh, and then we would have charged for them. Uh, with the new mid market proposition, you get them chucked in as standard, uh, which is great for the broker, great for the customer. Uh, so I'll, I'll go through a select few of these um, and then I'll just highlight what the main differential is for us under the commercial combined package. Uh, so capital additions, um, I think we've all had those calls um, on a Friday evening where the customer decided to purchase a building or an additional £100,000 piece of machine um, and they've called yourselves and said, you know, can we get cover for this? Um, so capital additions allows growth uh, in terms of acquiring new buildings uh, and machines and they've got cover over that weekend or until they disclose it to you uh, and then we can process that as an MTA but there is no gap in cover effectively uh, so that's what that clause does. Apologies if you can hear my background, my son's just come home. Um, uh, exhibitions, um, again um, customers love attending exhibitions, showing off their products, the capabilities, the services. Um, we normally used to process these as an MTA. So as and when clients would go out and do an exhibition, they would have to tell us. It's now built into the policy wording, avoids so much uh, work in terms of the broker, brokers being you know, inundated with MTAs for exhibitions. Um, normally they happen at least once per quarter. So that reduces your workload, reduces our workload, just by putting that into the policy wording. Um, supply chain, uh, so customers and suppliers, so whether it's downstream or upstream, if there's any damage uh, at any of those locations that impact the flow of goods back or forth, they've got 100k worth of cover there over six months. A prevention of access, we give 50k as standard uh, over three months. So that's as standard, you can request extra and we can underwrite that in uh, if you do need more. Um, and then the final one I'm going to cover off is, is the module policy wording. So in previous years, if you just wanted EL, for example, uh, you probably get a combined wording that has everything in there uh, and not all of it is applicable. Now with the modular wording, if you want MDBI, you will only get the policy sections referring to MDBI and general conditions as opposed to the whole comp about EL and PL as well. So it's more relevant, it's more appropriate, and it's more suitable and straight to the point. Uh, and, and again, the objective was to make the customers, the brokers, and the insurers' uh, lives easier because when it comes to a claim, you got a specific wording that you need to refer to uh, to handle those claims just to make your lives easier. Um, so what's the differential um, in the main? I would say the product is there. Uh, we're quite flexible on pricing. Um, so as a commercial combined underwriter, I have got quite a lot of flexibility. Um, it's the most flexibility I've had in the 12 years I've been at Zurich. So if the risk ticks the boxes, uh, we will go all out um, to make sure we onboard that mid-market uh, opportunity uh, because we are, we are looking to grow our book of business. So the main differential would be in terms of underwriting, it'd be myself and well, D and I. Uh, so it's, it's the people. That makes a difference. So when a customer comes to a broker, they're looking for confidence. You understand where the gaps are and what risks they want to transfer. Uh, and I prefer trading face-to-face -face, uh, or over the phone or via Teams. Um, so I think that's the main differential. So if there's anything to take away from today is pick up the phone, get in touch, send those inquiries through, and um, we'll do our best for you guys. Fab. Thank you, Z. Thank you for that overview. Um, Let's move on 
to the next slide. So there's a very wor wordy um, slide here, but I find it is better to articulate to our brokers um, where we are winning by giving you some trades and some premiums. Um, and hopefully the, the, the info on the screen displayed now gives you a real broad spectrum um, of the size of risks that we're writing. So I think in the region at the moment, we are writing risks that have a premium of five grand um, up to 200, 300 grand. So historically, I think Zurich used to really be perceived as one of those big game hunters. So we were really good at the real large stuff, but the everyday risks that you guys will be looking after, we really struggled um, to be effective on. Um, so this gives you a flavour that we very much have changed in that space. And I could sit here and, and display a red, amber, green of our trade and appetite. But what I would say is very pivotal to our appetite is risk features. So you could have a metal based manufacturing risk, which I would display in green in our sweet spot. But it, the construction could be um, inadequate the processes could be unattended the claims could be un, you know less than desirable on the risk so it's very much about those risk features that sit around a trade that make us add value um i mean there's some high level uh trade areas so growth areas for us are retail and wholesale manufacturing professional services engineering risks sports leisure and entertainment um but like I said, it's all about the risk features um, and what's and also the client themselves. So is the client really invested in their risk and exposure in their business and really um, keen to safeguard that now and in the future? We are there to support if the unexpected happens or, you know, the inevitable happens. So if, if a business is trying to um, support and work effectively, then we will do all we can to help and approach. And also the performance of the risk is really key. Um, so but this gives you a snapshot of the broad spectrum of the types of things we're winning. Um, recently, I've seen us. Any builders merchants that comes into us, we will absolutely smash out of the park. So if you've got any of those, bring them to our door. Any cricket clubs that you've got, I mean, there's plenty around the UK. That, again, seems to be a bit of a niche area that we're specialising in at the moment. Um, but as you can see from some of the trades that are detailed on this slide, it's really broad and vast. Um, but what is pivotal to a lot of our success is that early engagement where the broker will pick up the phone to either their relationship manager, whether that be Joe, whether that be one of my team, um, to have that conversation to say, we are looking to remarket this risk or we are attacking this new bit of business. The, 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 the trade is this, these are some of the, the features of it. What do you think you can do? And with that early engagement, it allows us to, maybe explain some of the additional information we might need and why we might need it. It also allows us to look beyond the policy and the price and think, what else can we offer that's really going to add value to that customer? Um, is it that they would really buy into some additional risk management support that we can offer as free as part of our solution? Um, is it that they need some more help with claims oversight and management so so that that really does help us um move stuff forward uh, i suppose fleet is the one area that i would probably call out that there are some trades that are absolute no-goes for us um and hopefully d will thank me for calling this out because it will save them a lot of time um so haulage is a complete no-go for us as zurich we do not have any appetite to write haulage, higher drive, um, so your courier type risks and businesses, taxi risks, um, not one for Zurich, agri, so anything where the fleet has got a real bias of agricultural equipment or wheels on there, again, won't be one for us. And Zurich do not do motor trade, um, one to call out there. Dee, have I covered the main ones off? Uh, recycling and waste. Oh, yes. How could I forget that one? And Z will probably thank Dee for saying that one as well. <laughs> um, yep. Also, uh, construction, highway works, lights, uh, heavier civils, plant hirers, if there's plant in the schedule, 
and care homes, accommodation only normally. So, yeah. Thank you. Um, and director owned, I suppose it's probably one thing to call out as well, that we can accommodate a small proportion of director owned vehicles, but we do look at that quite closely because of our any driver policy wording. You know, we do we do look at the proportion of director owned versus company owned um, on the on the schedule of vehicles as well. Um, fab, cool. No questions as yet anywhere in the chat or on the no. I'll take a pause. That's fine. So here's a summary of some of the proposition highlights, and I think this is where I feel we really differentiate ourselves from some of the other insurers in the market. Um, so we are absolutely open to doing one quote to market and exclusives. So you engage with us early on a on a risk, you commit to work with us on a risk and give us every opportunity to write that risk. We will also do the same in return for you guys. Um, it has to be reciprocal. Um, but you know, if you if you really see that there's value we can add to your customer on a risk and proposition, and, and likewise, we think, yeah, you give us all this information. We absolutely think we can go hammer and tongs and put a really good proposition on the table. We are absolutely happy, keen at doing it exclusives for our broker partners out there in the market. Um, we are seeing an increase in long term undertakings and we are absolutely um, happy to do long term deals and agreements with our customers. Um, we have done these at level rates as well over recent months as we see the market is changing. Ideally, we'd like to build a better rate in, but that's not always going to be viable in the current climate. But yeah, we absolutely can do two deals and long term undertakings. And again, we work with you and your customer to understand what's the best proposition. How is it going to work? Um, we um, claims rebates, so that's absolutely a tool in our armory that we can throw at a risk to, you know, for a well performing risk. Why not reward them for their performance um, and and staying with us as an insurer? So we're absolutely happy to do that. 0% direct debit for the right risk. Again, another another tool service solution we we offer frequently to our customers and brokers for them to access. So something um, for you to consider. And then the other areas mentioned on there are, are certain access that you have uh, as a Bravo network member to Zurich. So, you know, we have global capabilities. So if you have a risk where there is international exposure and a full global, we have um, a team that sit within Birmingham that are able to underwrite those risks for you. Um, we have a market leading construction wording, so construction 360 wording, which has um, it's, it's sort of a modular approach again. So you can add and build in the different elements that your contracting risk might need for the, the work and the jobs that they do. Um, we've got our own engineering insurance inspection team. So I touched on that before about the way that we can build that in um, to our proposition and offering to you. Um, and we're really strict on the risks we onboard in that space. So we need we will guarantee the service to sit behind it. We won't onboard an engineering inspection case if we don't have the engineers to service that customer. Um, so we're, we're, we're really strong in that space. And then from a risk management and surveying point of view, we have our own risk engineering team. So Z and D will work really closely with our risk risk engineering department to help understand a risk. So if you can give us a previous survey or early information about a risk and exposure, we can do a desktop review of that to give us a real strong indication as to the, the risk management of, the, of that exposure and whether there's any improvements, whether it's the best of the best to really help underwriting deploy the you know best rating they can really. And just to build on that, um, we also have um, a number of free tools and services that you can access. So Zurich Risk Advisor is an app on the phone or you can go on a website and it will allow you to electronically assess a risk, whether that be you as the broker or you as the client. 
and it will it will allow you to do a little bit of a grading and, a, and it, it will then give you some key areas that um, are either issues or concerns that are prevalent with that sector or risk or specifics to the risk and exposure details that you've put in to help an insured understand if there's small tweaks that they can make to improve their risk, if there's hot works permits that they need to start using more frequently within their business or um, uh, processes that are unattended. So they need to look at how they operate. This app will allow them to get some more insight and information as to how they can Im continuously improve. And then it will also give insight into claims trends for certain sectors. So something for customers to be aware of that if they can um, avoid certain claims that we as an organisation are finding are more prevalent in certain sectors. So lots of real good insight that you as a broker can use to educate your customers or a client could access direct. They don't actually have to be a client of Zurich to access these tools. They are, you know, you can go on the App Store and download Zurich Risk Advisor and use that um, I mean, hopefully that will encourage you to think of Zurich with all your cases and inquiries, um, but it's absolutely something you guys can use and access to. Um, and there's sort of more detail on there around um, prevention guys, Zurich Insights. So we have a email. And if you're not on the distribution list and you want to be, then let me know and I can disseminate how you get access to that. But it will send out um insight and updates on what's going on in whether it be the economic climate whether it be something to do with claims whether it's something to be rich risk management it'll give you real good insight that you can use um, with your customers and then claims so we all know that as insurers we live or die by our claims performance and how we turn up when your customers are at a point where they really need our help and support and we have invested a lot in how um, our claim service performs and develops. So we've all, always had a really strong claims represent, representation, but we um, have listened to our brokers' feedback and listened to the change in the way brokers and customers like to trade to provide different services and solutions to support. So as an example, we have a claims hub portal now where brokers can go on and get real-time information on their claims for the policies that they hold with Zurich. We also have WhatsApp as a tool and a solution for you to communicate with us on claims. We have live chat. We have all these different tools um, for you guys to reach the people you need as quickly as and as effectively as you need to, to get the right result in a claim. Um, and so for our larger customers and opportunities we have claims relationship managers that we can utilize to support where they will work with you and the customer to design a claim service that meets um, your customers needs so we really focus on um, making sure our responsiveness our service and support is where it needs to be to make sure that we're available when you and your client need us and so then in su in summary um, appetite, we're doing all we can to align our appetites and be flexible, work with you guys to really understand the risk and exposure that you have um, in your um, specialist areas or in your geographical areas. So we can come to you and give you a solution to the changing needs of customers. Um, we have a really broad appetite, but as I said, risk features are really key and early engagement is really key to help us um, deliver the best thing for you guys. Engagement, as Z said, pick up the phone. We're here. We're all busy, but actually speaking on the phone makes things so much easier and quicker to get underneath the skin of what you need, what your customer needs, and then you know give you a flavour of what we can and can't do. Um, a quick no is the best in some scenarios, but actually that phone call might get under the skin of um, what paper isn't telling us necessarily. So our underwriters are here, they're available. Joe, myself and the wider relationship management team are also here and available and more than happy to talk through opportunity that you have on the horizon. Um, Bravo Insights is obviously a great tool that will give us um, a more robust way of, of identifying those cases that we at Zurich really do think we can add some value on. And 
the next comment is around tools to help you win cases. So when I'm talking about the exclusives um, and the 0% DD and the long term deals, it's not just to win cases, it's to retain, because I think we all know it's a really aggressive marketplace and it's about how we can make um, customers buy into you guys as brokers, not just for today, not just for this year, for the long term. Um, and if we can deploy some of the value add solutions we have, like Zurich Risk Advisor, it just makes customers think of Zurich more frequently. And then local empowerment, as he said, he's got more underwriting flex than he's ever had um, and he wants to use it. So please challenge him with that. And also the team in Bristol. Um, Z isn't the only PNC underwriter we have in, in the Birmingham market. If he was, he'd be a very busy man. Um, but we've got a, a team of underwrite, new business underwriters within um, the Birmingham and Bristol offices that are absolutely hungry to trade and support brokers um, and work closely with you. If If there's an opportunity and, you know, being face to face and having a conversation in your offices or in our offices is going to help, then we are absolutely open for that. Um, so I will stop talking for a minute. Um, D, Z or even Joe, is there anything more you'd like to add before I open up to questions? No, just that package where we can is always a uh, best route into Zurich because we may be able to um, flex off one trade to another. Uh, good point. Yeah. And just to reiterate, pipeline, pipeline, pipeline. Yeah, <laughs> early engagement is it, it does help convert uh, quotes into new business. And Joe, anything you'd like to add? No, just just to really highlight, definitely the package everything as we can. Uh, well, well, when we get it, if we can see the full risk, then we definitely try and work something out on it. And again. The earlier we get it, we've seen a lot of success in it. We've seen it from a lot of uh, feedback that we get that we've been the first to come back to people. And that does make a big difference that we're able to do it. So, you know, always available to phone or email with any of those risks. And uh, even this one that you're unsure that we can do, always just give myself a call. Always happy to pick it up to discuss risks. I think uh, the more we know about it and the more uh, I can sell it as well. You know, I uh, it's always the best way forward, I think. Thank you, Joe. And then um, I'll open it up to any questions. Oh, go for it, Robin. Um, I, I, I can. I unfortunately, a lot of this doesn't really apply to me because we're a bit more niche in the construction business than um, general commercial and combined. Um, but one thing um, we are we are interested in is um, there's a there's a big a big focus on SME business that I can see and um, quick replies and um, and building a good relationship with the broker or in our our case MGA. Does that also does a similar thing apply to scheme underwriting as well as an MGA? Of course, um, we. We tend to do a lot of underwriting and schemes. Is that also something um, you are interested in, or is it just very much a broker relationship, not the MGA relationship that you are interested in hearing? Um, no, so we're absolutely up for new MGA scheme opportunities as Zurich. We have multiple MGAs and schemes that we currently operate and invest with, um, and it's something we can consider, um, and we can give you more insight into that if that is something that you want some more knowledge on, um, we can pick that up at, on a separate call to give you a flavour of where our appetite is, what the sort of parameters are yep, um, I'll be and the value we can add. I'll, I'll ping you a message and we, cool. we, we can discuss this later. Fab, thank you, Robin. Alison, hi, it's uh, Kevin Westcott here from Bravo. Hi, how are you doing? I'm good, how are you? Yes, very good, thank you, very good. Uh, that was really useful and thank you for taking the time out to, to do that. Um, I, I was with Will Edwards recently and he was talking about how on your SME side you've improved the interaction and how you're getting into brokers as quickly as you possibly can as you see the quotes going through. Um, are there any areas particularly that you're winning in that we need to be aware of on, on that E-Trade side that, um, that that sort of interaction is helping on? Um, so 
there's certain product areas. So Fleet has been a huge success with us for on an, on an SME side of things. I think um, yeah. our rate seems to be stacking up in the market. Um, commercial combined is absolutely a strong area for us in SME um, as well as in the regional space. And I think there's a, a misconception that SME, when the risk gets a bit more complex or a bit more varied, that our SME capabilities can't respond to that. Um, they absolutely can, but it just involves um, broker and underwriter engagement. So when you get that refer via Actress or Zurich Online, start a live chat and the team will help support and respond because we know sometimes uh the question set or the parameters within sme don't allow for all the quirks um that a commercial combined risk um might might deliver yeah i think i think he was saying sort of 80 percent improvement in interaction and getting into uh getting over to to brokers while they're going through that process and i think that's particularly valid on combined because it can be the trickiest one to to get onto e-trade so it's really yeah. um uh, it's great to hear that you're making those sorts of strides forward. So thank you. Yeah, but also what I would say is it's also the same in the mid-market space. So, you know, it, it, turnover is, is a very Zurich um, thing to use as to where a risk should go. And I know for a broker, it's generally around revenue to yourselves or the premium size as to where you feel the risk should go. Um, and you can get some really straightforward risks that have got a, five, seven, eight, 10 million turnover, but some really complex ones that have got a three million turnover. So whether as a broker you choose to use self-serve via Actress or Zurich Online or our regional underwriting teams, um, so Z and D, that engagement piece is, is really powerful. And like pipeline, which Z touched upon, especially in the regional space. So with a pipeline risk, so where you talk to us in advance, we both mutually commit to work together. Um, our quote rate is 47% on pipeline risks. A transactional case, our quote rate is 32%. Right. And then again, our strike rate on a pipeline risk is 39%. Our strike rate on a transactional risk is probably 33, 34. So there is some significant difference in if that engagement happens properly, robustly, um, with a collaborative approach, then the outcome for us and you and your customer is generally um, much better. Yeah. Well, look, I mean, we're all about driving efficiencies into all of our businesses and um, the fact that you've arranged this and listened to some of the responses from our survey that we ran just before our conference in uh, in February. Um, it's greatly appreciated. So thanks for everyone for taking the time out to, to talk to us about that. No, that's absolutely fine. Um, we we appreciate you guys giving us this airtime as much as anything. Um, so I'll follow up with the slides. I'll, what I'll also, so the focus of this session was mid-market and our regional trading capabilities. So we'll follow up with the presentation and also we've got a very interactive, I'm gonna stop sharing, um, PDF document, which allows you to really dissect some of the areas that I've spoken about. Um, and I suppose it's just, yeah, let, let's all keep talking. Let's all keep engaging. And if this session has been recorded, so we can share that as well um and myself c and d and joe are you know here raring to go um and want to support as much as possible great well if you can um if you can share this recording with us we'll um we'll then uh, disseminate it out to those that uh, couldn't make the call Ab, perfect well i'll just double check there's no more questions from anyone else on the call before i close and thank you, Richard, for your comments on 0% DDs. Yes, I think it does. They are quite appealing in the market at the minute. So, yeah, keen to deploy them as much as possible. Perfect. OK, well, thank you all again so much for your time and the opportunity to speak with you all. Um, I hope you have a great rest of the week and please shout if you need anything. I'll make sure our contact details are shared um, with the um, follow up documents.